All right, we are recording. Hey, everyone again. So we will start with the, your fantastic demos. And then we will do the retro and the issues as usual. Um, so who wants to share their screen first and uh, show us what they did last week? Uh, we can get started, if that's okay. All right, great. All right, I'll uh, share my screen. Okay, uh, can you see? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. all right. So this week, Jonathan and I worked on issue number seven. Uh, the user story was that as a user, I want to filter my shopping list to make it easier to locate an item in the list. So yeah, it was a pretty straightforward task, implement a search bar filter for the list that would allow the user to search for a specific item. Uh, the acceptance criteria was very short as well. Uh, one is that the form was added to the list view above the shopping list and that it used semantic HTML with a label. And then it also required that there was a clear field button in order to reset the search filter. So that is what we did. And this is how it looks like now. Uh, I have here one of our example lists. And in the search bar, I can look for chicken. And then I'll get chicken. And then I can clear the input here. Or I can also uh, revert back to empty state by, by deleting. And I'll let Jonathan uh, walk us through the code that we wrote. Right. So can you can you hear me properly? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll share my screen now. I've got a house full. Sorry if you can uh, if you can hear that in the background. No worries. Right. Um, so in terms of the code, uh, we firstly created a search bar file um, uh, for our search bar component, just so that it allows a list uh, file just to look a little bit cleaner rather than putting everything in, in one file. Um, um, and uh, within that, you can see that we've got our search bar uh, component and then we've got uh, it's various uh, props there uh, signs with the with the values. Um, in terms of our search bar component, um, we've set up a form there, as you can see there below. Um, just, yeah, you can see that below uh, with a label and then our input. Uh, as you can see, the HTML for and the ID in the input both match, and therefore when we're on our app, as Corel showed. And click on the label, the focus moves to the input, which is aligned with the accessibility points that Ray mentioned last week. Um, for our input, um, we've got a handle change function. Uh, where is it? Handle input change uh, function that handles our filter. Um, there's a uh, within the function, our set search state is given uh, the value of the user input. And then when we look through our shopping list data to find any items that match what the user has inputted, and then set display data is given a value of the filtered users from above. Um, below that is our handle clear function. Um, Uh, which one's clicked empties any text which may be input and returns a list uh, as it was. Uh, finally, in our list file, uh, we have our use effect hook, which really helped us implement as we had an issue with our shopping list not showing when we refresh the page. Um, with the use effect hook, now it only runs once our data array receives a value and will therefore display all of our shopping items. Uh, with the use of the spread operator and our data prop. So, yeah. All right, great. Um, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Geralt. Uh, everything is clear. 
Uh, does anyone have any questions about anything? All right, if uh, if all good, then we can move to Huda. You will do the you will do the demo by yourself today. Yeah, I'll so I'll do both. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Let me just share my screen. Okay, can you see? Uh, yes, yeah. we can. Okay, so our task for this week was to create a form so the user would be able to uh, share their list with uh, a recipient of their choice, but that user needed to be in the Firebase. And we, shows, um, we show a notification based on that. And the acceptance criteria, as we see here, the managed list view shows a form that allows the user to enter an email to invite an existing user to a list in addition to the form that allows them to add items. And this is the form that um, was added last week. The input that accepts the email has a semantic label element associated with it. The user can submit this form with both mouse and uh, enter key. If the other user exists, the user is alerted that the list was shared. And this one would be, with this one would be as um, a toast showing. If the uh, other user does not exist, the user is shown an error message that explains the problem. And I will show you in the production here. I will first go to home. Uh, uh, all the changes we did was in manage list here. As you can see, we added the form. But if you want to share a specific uh, list, you will have to click on it. First, I will um, share a list that's uh, one of mine. And uh, I will share it with Marcia. And this one, this email exists in the Firebase. This one does not. So we can see the notification that shows. So I will show it with Marcia. And as you can see, the share the list is shared successfully. And if you go to the Firebase, you will see the list here in Marcia's shared list. Then I will um, share the same list, but with the, with the email that does not exist in the Firebase. And it will say, recipient email does not exist. Then I will try to share Marcia's uh, list, which she shared with me. But since I'm not the owner, it will say this. You are not the owner of this list. And now I will go to the code. And yeah, we added the user object in the manage list so we can use it. And as you can see here, there was another form, which is the add item form, but we moved this into um, the components. And since we have two forms, we thought it would be more organized to make a folder for it. Since this one is all, also a form. And we added this one here and we created the share list form. And we imported both of them here and we based uh, the list path and the user object. And in the share list form, we created a form to receive the recipient email with the label, as you can see here, invite the user by email input that receives the recipient email and sets it into the state to be used later. And when the user submits this form, this handle submit will run. And with it, the share list from the Firebase, the function, and uh, it takes list path, current user ID and recipient email. This one will come from the parameter that we passed, the list path. The user here, we will take it from the user object and we will add it here the recipient email will come from the state. And then it will uh, clear the input. Uh, so we can add the toast notifications. We couldn't add it here because this function has uh, some conditions and to make it more clear and show the exact toast that we wanted to show, we had to add it with the, like, with the conditions. First, when, we, when it checks for the current user, if they are the owner or not, if they are not, it will show this error message. If they are, it will move down to here. Another check, if the recipient email exists in the Firebase. Uh, if they are not, it will show this error message. If they are, then it will move to share uh, share the list uh, with the, um, the other users shared list to show there in the Firebase with their uh, existing lists. Then it will show the success message, this list shared successfully. 
and also we added the generic uh, like uh, fail fail to share for any other error that might show. And as you can see here, it, uh, all the changes we made, this is like the result for it. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, thanks to you, Huda. Uh, that was a great demo. Everything is clear and organized. Uh, also, everything is working. So that's great. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions about code, about functionalities, before we move on to our retro? All right. If there are no questions, we can... Uh, Move on to to do the our second retro, and Harris will take care of that. Yes. Yes, we can. So in the retro, uh, we usually uh, discuss what went well, uh, or maybe what went wrong, and what uh, can be improved, and uh, what we can do about those things that uh, we should work on or act on. Uh, those uh, uh, things are called action items in this table. And first, we will write some appreciation, like what the colleagues or how they uh, collaborate with each other and then we can try to show what we to do and all these things. And I'm expecting everyone collaboration on this. Everyone should write their own feedback or appreciation or what can improve or what went to do everything. So please join me in this and let's write something and then you will read it aloud and talk about it. So let's start on this. Uh, on the appreciation, uh, uh, I see the collaboration is improving a lot, and specifically, uh, I noticed this week. Uh, this week, it was the review process. It's getting very good, and everyone is uh, reviewing each other's code and uh, I'm really impressed with uh, yeah. So let's cite this. Uh, just a side note, I sent the link in Slack in case someone can find it.
can we start? Mm, for me, I'm I'm done. About thirty minutes. So as I said, uh, the collaboration is getting and uh, I'm actually really impressed with the review process, like how collaborations are reviewing materials. And, and uh, thank you, Rida and Jonathan, for your kindness and patience as you were actually going to require support. Sorry, Harris. Maybe you can if you if you click on that if you click on that um on the card. This card. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I guess Geralt wrote this. So maybe she will be better for everyone to read their what what they wrote because we forgot we forgot the the names for each card, but you can see yeah. it there. Everyone, please. Oh, what what is the problem with the card? No, no, there there is. Just if you can read it, please. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, just thank you to to you, Rita, and to Jonathan. Uh, as we work through the bug that we had, um, we were having some issues finishing up our search bar. We were having a component reload thing happening, and then turns out there was an infinite loop somewhere that was overwhelming the first door. Um. But yeah, in the end, it was a simple typing of a button that we had missed. And after changing that, uh, everything worked <laughs> as it was supposed to. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it was uh, it a great learning experience. So the important we, we could solve it. OK, uh, so this is me again. Carry uh, job, everyone on the issues. Uh, this is running like, very smoothly, everything. Uh, you guys are uh, handling everything amazingly well. I'm uh, impressed with that. Uh, uh, everyone in here is a junior developer, you can say, and you are uh, you guys are doing a very good job. So, so Reda, it's you. Yeah, same same as you. Thanks for everyone for the time and effort they put into finishing their tasks at time. Um, there isn't uh, everything is going smoothly, and uh, the collaborators are really motivated. And uh, yeah, so thanks for everyone. Yeah. Um, I'll Put, I enjoyed work as, working with my team, my teammate Keralt on our issue this week. And we got there on the end with our issue after a little hiccup with the, the Firestore. And uh, yeah, thanks to Raider for his help with that. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks, Huda, for uh, the the advisor and the review to add the trim so we could remove the spaces and improve the search bar functionality. I think I'm going to add that to all of the search and filter features that I implement from now on. Yeah, uh, I also... Yeah, no problem. That, I also noticed that on the PR, I uh, missed that in the review process, but Huda mentioned that. So good job. So this is me again. Uh, a big thanks to Reda. Uh, you are running everything very smoothly and uh, informing everyone and keeping everyone in the loop. So thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to you and to the mentor. So uh, when I say everyone, I mean everyone, the collabies and uh, the mentors. And by the way, you skipped Huda. <laughs> skipped Huda's card. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I would just want to thank Marcia. She was a great partner and I hope she feels better. It's me again. Uh, as I said, uh, you all guys are doing a great job on this season. You're closing it like really fast. It's, it's you again. Yeah. Uh, everything was uh, was great the last two weeks. Uh, the communication and uh, the collabs also weren't afraid to ask questions when uh, when they needed help. And that's something not everyone could do actually. Like um, in some cohorts, we had like uh, people like uh, somehow not afraid to ask questions, but maybe shy or intimidated to do so. So yeah. That's uh, asking question is also like a, a great skill to, to have. And by the way, I will share with you like um, an article that I always like to to share. And it's about how, how to ask questions properly. And uh, I think it will be useful uh, either now or when you got your job within, within your company. It uh, just like, how you need to to include like uh, the steps you already did this you already like um when you asked your question you already like provided enough information which is was great um but let me just send it here in the chat just someone if someone want to, to take a look uh because as I said, asking questions is a is a skill by itself. Yeah. So great work, everyone. Okay, uh, it's me again. Really like the demos. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, everyone is explaining their part, and I like the part where you guys explain the code and what it does. Uh, it shows you truly understand your code and what you write. Uh, you guys have the reason uh, why I like this code and how it works. So, great work on that. It's, uh, I guess, Karen? Uh, yeah, please me. Because it ran really well because it was uh, work working with uh, Jonathan. Because even before the Firestore issue, there were some things that we uh, took a little bit of time to figure out. But we really put our heads together and like thought about it, read documentation, check Slack, and that's it was it was really enjoyable working through these little issues with someone. Yeah. Two brains are always better than only one. When you're working with someone, it's always better. Hundred percent. Uh, I guess that's me. So the same as Harris uh, said, the, the demos are much, much better. Uh, couldn't ask for for more. Um, yeah. Uh, you also like just exactly what Harris said. Uh, so yeah, also it's, it's good that uh, I noticed like every week, the person that like you are doing the rotation so everyone has gone through the code, I guess, and everyone has also gone through the through demo and production, which is good. I guess Marcia is the only one that she didn't go through through the code yet, I guess, uh, and uh, she isn't here, unfortunately. So maybe whoever is bearing with her next week, please do inform her to uh, and encourage her to do the 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 code part. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so this week it went well getting to the bottom of our issue and then also just learning about if I was faced with a similar issue in future and now know how to solve it. So that, that went well. I guess it's for that. Yeah. yeah, as I said before, Mercy was a great teammate. We, we bugged together and and figure out how to show the toast with the conditions and all, and we did well.
So it's me again, and uh, what could be improved? Honestly, uh, there is nothing to improve. Everything is going very smoothly, and uh, in the action, let's keep up this good work. And thanks everyone. Thanks for the collaboration. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Oh, sorry, uh, Yeah. Uh... Same as Harris, uh, everything was really smoothly and good. Um, I will say for, I have just, this is not something we need to improve, but something like just a, a small note. Um, in the review process, I uh, noticed that when, when someone like requests a change and the change is done, um, it, it's not being communicated or something like that. Because um, I always find um, the request like still there. Um, let me share my screen so I can demonstrate this better. Give me just a second to open up PR. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find which PR was that. Uh, I couldn't find the PR, so I guess it was done correctly. I guess I just missed that. But anyway, just my point is when someone like requests a change and the other person implement the change, then you will need to review again. So that's uh, that's my point. Um, I guess it was already done, but uh, just a small note. Yeah. So we can move on to our issues for the next week. Uh, Tommy, please, if you can share your screen and walk us through it. All right. All right. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Well, but we can see um, this code, not uh, not the browser. Oh, oh, no. Yes, all good. All right, so um for Marcia and Jonathan as a user. So, as a user, I want to see a welcoming prompt to add my items. If my list is empty, to help me get oriented to how the app works. Sorry, my network is white. So. All right, so let me read it again. As a user, I want to see a welcoming from to add my first item if my list is empty to help me get oriented to how the app works. So the summary is when a user starts a new list, they need a little guidance on how to get started. Think through what you would want to see as a user and make some intentional user experience decision that will guide are users in confidently adding their very first item. So the acceptance criteria is the list view.
Uh, I guess she cut, right? Her internet, yeah. I guess her oh, internet cut. Yeah, it dropped. Please, can you see my screen? Uh, no, no, you you lost internet for a moment. So if you can share your screen again, it would be great. Yeah. I don't know, my network is quite far. All right. How about now? Yeah. You can see me. Yep. Yep. So we are we are signing this. <laughs> oh, we are signing this to March here. Yeah. And also Jonathan. To the, the bottom one. Oh, yes, please. All right. So. Wow. Um, for Uda and Fuera, as a user, I want to mark an item on my shopping list as purchased so the app can learn how often I buy different items. The summary is user needs to oh, user need a UI that allows them to mark their items as purchased so they can track what's on their list they do and do not okay what they do and do not need to buy. So the acceptance criteria is list item component renders a checkbox with a semantic label, checking of the item in the UI also updates the date last purchase and total purchases properties on the corresponding file store documents. The item is shown as checked for 24 hours after the purchase is made. We assume the user does not need to buy the item again for at least one day. After 24 hours, the item unchecks itself so the user can buy it again. The update item function in Firebase.js has been filled out and sent updates to the Firestore database when an item is checked. So there's a note. Why you need to update multiple parts of the Firestore document? For this feature, do not worry about dateness purchased yet. That will be addressed in a future issue. You can use the Firestore console to test that this feature is working correctly by manipulating the value of the date last purchased. So I'll be assigning this to Freya. And Sorry, please, can you remind me? Ah, uh, Uda, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So that's all on this week, it shows. My few thing. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Tommy. Uh, feel free to add whatever you wanted. <laughs> no, I'm done. All right. Uh, uh, does anyone have any questions? No, not at the moment. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess the the these weak issues are uh, are simpler than the previous one. Um. Yeah. So we are done for our weekly sync. Uh, I have just like. Uh, just wanted to check. Uh, do you guys like go through the the learning modules, the self study ones? Not sure if you had any. Uh, yeah, you had some. You had some like. Uh, let me see. No, you didn't. Okay, okay, my bad. So there is for this week. There is the um, what to include on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah.
uh, just wanted to to remind you that they are useful and uh, please check them when you have some some time. Um, does anyone have any other questions or anything before we end? I wanted to ask, uh, what do do we have a set time for the office hours now? Yes, we do. Uh, I will send the invites. I will send the invites today, okay? Uh, for the rest of the cohort, but it won't include the link, uh, because, uh, each mentor will provide their links. Okay, so, yeah. I it's hope that works. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so we will have a an event, right, on Google Calendar, and it's going yeah, to be yeah. the same as this one. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, it will be it will be the same as this one, but without a link. That's that's the that's the only difference because every time the uh, every time it will be different. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. I I can't remember which time exactly we dealt with. I guess five. I guess 5 p.m. every Wednesday. I believe it's 5 p.m. every Wednesday. So, yeah, that's it about the office hours. And I will let you know which mentor will be in charge for, for the code review this week. Uh, uh, yeah, it will be Tommy. I, I, I remember. It will be Tommy. It will be, <laughs> sorry, my... Uh, okay. Tommy will be. I thought it was. I saw it as it was assigned to Aries. Yeah, yeah. This week it was. Um, it was like a confusion because it was supposed Tommy to do the the code review, but uh, it got assigned to Harris. So we yeah, yeah. I things. I yeah. So Tommy will do the office. Uh, no, sorry, not the office hours, but the the code review. <laughs> this week I will be doing the office hours this week. And yeah, that's it. Um, I will uh, see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. See you next bye. week. Bye bye.